Uh, welcome to another episode of uh, talking about what the heck happens after um, the world kind of ended, the world changed. Um, I'm Brent Bushy and really happy to have Kyle Lyerly, the uh, superintendent of Fort Cobb Public Schools. Uh, hi, hi, Kyle. Good morning. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good, and we should date this stuff so if people are listening. So today is Friday, March 27th. Kyle, I'm not sure if you're aware, but the world's kind of changing quickly right now. So, um, really, I, I don't. I guess maybe I missed that. I heard a I heard a person yesterday tell me that we're now referring to this as uh, 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 they're referring to the day yesterday, and they said BC on there. I said, "What are you talking about?" Before Corona. So I like uh, it. I like it. Yeah. It's now uh, uh, 3-27-2020 BC. You know, or, or I guess it's. You know, however you want to refer to that. So yeah. I don't know. All I know is, I, for the first time, I'm glad that I actually have to take a daily medicine now because I know what day of the week it is because I look at yeah. it in the morning. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you know, and, and with not going, you know, we didn't have church service at our church this last Sunday, so I didn't go to church on Sunday. I told my wife that we were going to have to sit down Sunday morning and have a household Bible study or watch a service or do something, or my week is just off. So. Yeah, it just yeah, it just throws off all your routines. So yeah, yeah. Okay, well, so really happy to have you on. Um, we Fort Cobb, I know, is a school that's done a lot of work on personalized learning and uh, sort of integrating technology in the classroom. Um, and we know that schools right now are are scurrying like heck because starting April six, all schools have to have distance learning plans in place. Um, we know today the State Department's issuing, a, so they're launching a website. I, I actually haven't had a minute to look yet, so this is 10 in the morning. Um, but at some point today, I know that that website's going to be live, and they're going to have a framework up there for schools. Um, so, you know, I think there's a lot of resources. I, I know there's a lot of other resources available out there online, but, you know, for schools that are drinking from the fire hose, I thought it would be helpful to, you know, have a school on that that's done some of this already and is kind of has some plans in place and it's not fair because Fort Cobb is such a rich, you know, urban area within Oklahoma, right? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're about as rural as you can get. So yeah, yeah, yeah. About as rural and you guys don't have really, you're, 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 you're operating with pretty little ad valorem as well, generally speaking, right? Yeah. Our, our budget here is, you know, we're full on state aid, you know, our, our district valuation is only about 9 million. So you know, that kind of tells you where we fall out in the, in the, you know, local tax scheme there. So we're dependent upon grants and, and state aid funding and federal funding. You know, so yeah. there, there's a lot of schools out here, my size, you know, we're, we're a district of, of 340 kids pre-K through 12. So, um, you know, but just, you know, the, the word I've got right now is, you know, we can get through this, you know, yeah. all districts can get through this. Everybody's what they're doing is going to look different, you know, and, but it, it, we can get through it. So, cool. All right. So, so you heard earlier this week that you're going to distance learning. You probably we kind of all I think we're starting to think that you know over the weekend. At least I was. I was kind of turning my head there. So, when you got the word that it's moving to distance learning, what's what are the plans that you've been, that you've put in place, and sort of how did maybe maybe you give me some background beforehand so we know sort sure. of how how you're able to do that. Sure. So the, the first thing that we done, and, and actually, you know, for a district our size, I'm pretty fortunate. I have a full-time uh, IT person. So I, I, we are, we're really heavy loaded on, on technology and use a lot of online curriculum already. We've been doing that for several years. We've been through the personalized learning deal, made our adjustments to that. Um, but, you know, my tech, oh, probably a month ago when this whole thing kind of started hitting, she said, Kyle, she said, I think I'm going to pull our, start pulling out our devices that we haven't been using and getting those ready. So she, she started that, you know, a month ago, probably. And, and we started thinking about that. You know, the, the, the first thing we done whenever we realized that, Hey, we're early on, we're probably, there's a good chance we may not come back to school. You know, the first thing we done is we put out a survey, you know, where to decide to find out where our parents are at, where our families are at. Um, you know, do you have internet access at home? You know, if, if and do you guys have, you didn't have to worry about devices. Does every, every student has their own device or did you? All of our students uh, six through 12 already have a device. Okay. Eight through 12 carry their devices home with them. Sixth and seventh grade use their devices at school. 
So we were already good to go, you know, six through 12 with devices. So we started pulling those devices out that we have, made sure they were all ready to go, made sure they had what's in for our, any of our elementary students that didn't have a device at home. So you're going to move, you're going to have all your kids on devices. At different levels. Yes. Um, six through 12, we will use Odysseyware, Edgenuity. Um, I don't, there's a couple of other programs that we already use in the middle school. And are you giving the kids, you're giving the kids Chromebooks or what are you giving? Those? iPads. We, we're an iPad. We use all iPads. Okay. So everybody uses iPads. Okay. Everybody uses iPads. Okay. And are they using touchscreen or do you give them a keyboard? Uh, they use a touchscreen. That's a different generation. It is. It is. And you know, and that's what's crazy about it is, you know, even especially as they get a little older, the junior, senior level kids here, you know, they'll say, oh, you know, we don't use our iPad much. We just use our phone. I mean, they'll do assignments on their phones and, you know, they like it. Some of them, you know, some of them like to use a desktop or a laptop. Some of them carry their own laptops and, you know, and that's, that's okay. So, uh, so you let them, so they can log into your Odyssey Wear or your Edge or whatever, whatever content you have with whatever device they want to use. Yes. Yeah. It's open. So they can, and it, it works well on any platform. So. Okay. No, I, I think that makes sense. Um, and then, okay, so so one, you you started figuring out where you are from a from a uh, device and connectivity, or really connectivity was was your concern. Is is can everybody connect? What'd you find out? Well, you know, I was really a, a little bit surprised. I only found that we had we only had ten families in our district that had no type of internet access at home. So, you know, I. I I was real kind of surprised with that. I thought that number would probably be a little higher, but um, you know, that's, that's where we landed is we have 10 families that had no internet, internet access at home at all. So. Okay. So you've got, um, so, so families can, you know, so, and, and so, so you've got 10 families. So then you're, you're ordering what to, how are you going to address those 10 families? Well, as soon as I seen what was going on with that, I started ordering, um, we're a Verizon school. We use Verizon anyway. I have an account with them. So I ordered, um, the MiFi hotspots. Yep. And then I started also, I found one, I had one teacher that did not have internet access at home. So I activated a iPad with cell data on it and gave that to her so she has you know uh, other than her phone you know she had something with data data plan on it other than her phone so um, so we'll, we'll be using the hot spots from uh, Verizon which are hard to get and uh, also iPads with uh, cell data on so. okay okay so, so you got devices you've got connectivity now what are you, what's your expectation for your teachers, like what's a day look like for a teacher? What's a day look like for, you know, a kid at different levels? Well, and I think for different, different levels, it's going to be different. Um, you know, just before I got in here with you, uh, we were on a, a Zoom meeting with all of our elementary teachers. So we've been testing, you know, Zoom, making sure all our teachers know how to get in. Um, you know, yesterday I done that same thing with my high school teachers. So, and, and when I say that, you know, I am dealing with smaller numbers. You know, high school teachers yesterday, I had 14 people in a Zoom conference. Yep. You know, elementary today, I think we had 17 or 18 in there. But, you and know. Not, is, it, is it working okay or is it, is yeah, it glitchy? it's working fine. It's working fine. So, okay. yeah, Zoom, Zoom works. No yeah, problem. Zoom's been working great for us. Google can, but it, it's not as, it seems to be a little more glitchy. Um, and I don't know if that's, I, I don't know why, because we've used Google a lot. Um, as a team and haven't had the issues that since I just wonder if, if they're getting crunched because so many people are using Google classroom. I don't know. Um, that, that could sure be an issue. So, yeah. So you think that the, I was just worried that bandwidth in rural areas may cause problems, but so far you're not seeing that. No, not having a problem yet. And, and like I said, with our teachers there again, wasn't a huge group, but sure. most of our class sizes here aren't too much bigger than 18 to 20. I think the biggest class we have is 30. So, <laughs> You know, that's a, you know, I think we're going to hold together on bandwidth, okay? Uh, we have plenty of bandwidth here at the school. So, you know, that that's a question teachers ask, you know, can we come up to our classroom and use our, our stuff in there? And I said, well, we're going to hold on that for a little bit before I give you an answer on that. We will, we, 
maybe before we get to the end of the school year, we'll be able to do some of that. But, cool. So. Yeah, so right now, seems, everybody seems to be able to get in and, and, and work, and, and, and our Zooms with the teachers have worked fine. So Good. And so then if I'm a ninth grader, you know, I've got, what, six classes that I take? Yep. What's that look like? What's a day going to look like for me on April 6th? Well, I think, you know, the important thing for us to remember, and, and we've kind of started our own virtual school here this last year, and so I've learned a little bit about that, still, you know, by no means an expert on that whatsoever, but... You know, what I figured out pretty quick, and, and, and even with my, we run an alternative ed co-op here, so, you know, uh, I don't think our goal is or should be to try to fill six hours a day for a kid. You know, if you run on a six hour or seven hour a day, you know, our goal shouldn't be that. You know, our goal should be to make sure that we have communications with those kids once one of their teachers at least is communicating with them every day. We're still working on our communication schedule, but, you know, I'm thinking for an elementary kid, you know, probably maybe an hour to an hour and a half at the most, a high school kid. We, I told my teachers to use 30 minutes per class period as a rule of thumb, you know, so, you know, you're talking three hours there if they're in six, in six class periods. So, so if I've got a well, freshman with algebra, right. If I'm taking algebra as a freshman, um, and I've got that. Am I going to have a set time where I log into Zoom, or like, like, or am I just going to be working, say, in Edgenuity for for thirty minutes? Well, it's going to be a lot of independent work in in Odysseyware Edgenuity, whichever one we're using for that particular class. We're since Odysseyware and Edgenuity have merged, we've used both this year. Yeah. Uh, my Spanish classes are in in uh, Edgenuity. I really like those. Some of the stuff we still do in Odyssey wear. So, I mean, it's going to be a, um, you know, a work at your own pace type thing uh, with logging into a Zoom conference with your teacher, you know, two to three times per week, you know, for Algebra 1. You know, Algebra 1, and, and I've told my teachers too, you, you need to stay available to those kids during the day. You yep. know, we are, we are still on contract, you know, you are still a teacher and, you know, we're still on contract for us a school day. So stay available, be monitoring what those kids are doing in their Odyssey wear, you know, watch, and we are using, and, and this is something that, you know, I think is important for our communication piece, you know, just maybe not necessarily Zoom, you know, it, it's important that how you communicate with students is traceable. You know, I, I, as a superintendent, I'll, I, I tell, I tell my principals, you know, I said, I get up every morning and try to figure out, I want to make sure that nobody gets in trouble today, school wise, teacher wise, administrator wise, you know, I do everything I can to keep everybody out of trouble. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to caution people, other teachers, be careful with Facebook. You know, every communication that you have with a student should be logged. I mean, it should be archived. So, so where are they, where are they doing that communication for you? Well, we are using, we're going to use Zoom, which can be recorded. And yep. then we will use Odyssey where six through 12, five, actually five through 12 as our communication piece directly with students. So it has like a chat functionality. It has a chat functionality with it. Actually, it's it's more like an email, but it can, it doesn't go anywhere out of the system. Okay. Students can't communicate with each other. They can only communicate with their assigned teachers. But the thing about it is, everything in that system is archived. You can't delete a communication between a, a teacher and a student, or a student and a teacher. So it, it's all archived. You can't delete it. So you don't want teachers texting with students, or preferably know. not. Yeah. Um, you know, like on Facebook, what I said was told them is, you know, look at it like this, that if there's a, a sixth grade student and their parent doesn't want them to have Facebook, but we say, well, this is going to, this is how we're going to communicate. And they let them have a Facebook account and something happens there that doesn't have anything to do with school. You know, Cause nothing, I mean, nothing would happen bad on social media. Oh, right? No, 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 never. But yeah. you know, I'm just the, the, Sexual predators are going to just be rampant out there right now with all the kids that are home and, you know, on social medias. I mean, they're just, this is a field day 
for those type of people. So we have to guard against that and we have to watch for that yep. and listen to what our kids are saying and be paying attention for those things too. And yeah, and I also think I like the idea of having, if you're doing all of your communication within Odyssey Wear or schools are using Google Classroom, or Canvas, or whatever, because as a parent right now, you know, I'm, thank God my wife is able to take care of most of this right now. I mean, I, I love my children. Like when I'm working is not always the case. Um, and so, but I can, if I could step out and I could see, okay, this is the communication that the teachers had with each of my daughters, and this is what they've said back. And, you know, that, that would be such a useful place if there's a central place I could see that. Right, right. And, you know, and I'm not saying that, like, Facebook Live or uh, uh, recording on Facebook doesn't have a place. I yep. think we need to just be sure that we keep those types of communications with parents. Yep. And, you know, or, or a post out there, a teacher post out there. I have a lot of my teachers right now, especially in elementary, they'll do uh, postings from their classroom on Facebook. They have a, a, a kindergarten Facebook page that is closed. You know, it's not public. Um, and, but the parents are the ones that are in that account. So, yep. I mean, I think you keep those communications with the parents on Facebook or Snapchat or your social media, whatever you use. I don't think that's a problem. I think it's when we start using Facebook or another social media to communicate with the students that it will be a problem for somebody somewhere. Yep. So. Yeah. No, I, I think that's, that's sage advice. Um, talk to me about the, how are you dealing with, you know, this is just so sudden, right? We went on spring break and then all of a sudden, you know, I would say the world ended, right? Um, how are you dealing with teachers and, and with kids just sort of missing that routine? Well, and, and that's a that's a big issue. And that's what, you know, you know as I was talking about, I, I talked to a couple of seniors yesterday. They're, they're trying to figure out, I mean, all of a sudden they were in their senior year. You know, we were headed toward graduation. We were headed toward prom and, and you know, end of the year activities and athletic events. and Because and everyone in Fort Cobb plays basketball and baseball too, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, literally every single human plays basketball and baseball. So. Yeah, I mean, that's a big deal here. You know, if there's a state level championship or state level tournament for something that we participate in, we expect to be in it. So, I mean, that, that's just been a big shocker for us. And, and it doesn't matter if it's athletics or, or FFA or, you know, 4-H or whatever we're in, you know, we plan to be in the, the, the top end of those competitions. So all of a sudden that stuff is just all gone. And, yeah. you know, end of the year field trips for your elementary kids. They're just, they're gone. And so you know, it's been very emotional and it's been very emotional for the teachers of, you know, they miss their kids. They're concerned about their kids. And, you know, we've been doing the uh, uh, handing out meals every day. So I made, I've made sure that every day this week I've been in that meal line as those parents drive through and hand out, pick up their kids meals that, you know, I've been there, you know, to re to encourage the parents and the, and the kids are in the car and they're waving and it's a Mr. Larley, Mr. Larley, we're glad to see you. And, and uh, you know, so I think that's important. And I'll, like I said, I'll say that again. I think as much as anything out of this whole deal is it's, it's just as important for those kids and even parents to see their teachers and uh, <clears throat> to see us here at the school in a positive light that, uh, you know, that's just as important as the educational part of this. So, yeah. you know, my counselor has been talking about the social emotional part of it and been working with teachers and putting stuff together for kids and, and that stuff also. So. Yeah. Uh, this may be a little too early, but I'm wondering, have you thought about doing anything virtually like a graduation or any type of a community event where you can still kind of maintain that camaraderie? Yeah, we are. We're, we're, I had a parent tell me yesterday or bounce an idea, and I had seen this out there before about maybe doing a senior parade where they all, you know, hang signs or do whatever they want to do to the family car, and, and they, they drive by the school, and, and I present them their, the senior, their diploma, and then they, you know, drive through town, and, and everybody can stand on their porch and maintain our social distancing, but, you know, they can stand on their porch or they can back into a parking spot you know, downtown on our main street and stay in their cars and, and, 
and and recognize those seniors and, and their accomplishments. So we're uh, the first of next week we're going to do a Zoom senior class meeting. So okay. you know we're going to get those seniors all together virtually and and talk about this stuff. So that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, I. Um... I mean, I think down the road, I mean, I understand people's frustration not having the traditional graduation. I think it would probably become a rallying point of, hey, I was the class of 2020. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. you know, this is, well, and, they're going to be. That's what I was thinking about that senior parade. You know, that may become an annual event. We may have graduation, but we may have a senior parade also. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I. I do not want to put an unnecessary rose, you know, rosy. Um, view on this i can assure you i'm personally going nuts i'm, I'm really good friends there's a couple paint ships over here on the wall and i'm really good friends with these things now. <laughs> um, but um i do think that there's some opportunities um like that to, to start maybe some new traditions and to do some things um you know just personally i don't know about you but i've been able to reconnect with some friends i haven't talked to a lot and um so we've done, you know i've spent a lot of time with my girls playing board games and stuff which is that's nice. It's stuff that, you know, I want yeah. to do. But. Well, and, and, you know, and, and I think we're seeing that with families. And, and this is a good opportunity for families to reconnect. You know, we're, we're all so busy and we run so fast that all of a sudden, you know, now for the whole family, the everything's just come to kind of a screeching halt. I know a lot of parents are still going to work and yep. we still have things, obligations that they have to take care of. But, you know, it's a great time to reflect. And, and fortunately, we're in a rural area where, you know, we have a we have a, a lake and a state park here in our community. So I've seen a lot of boats traveling through town. People are heading out to fish. Um, you know, my wife and I, we went out to the park the other day and, and, you know, people that are out there camping and, you know, families that are out there camping. You know, it, it's just a great time to reconnect. You know, I had one parent tell me the other day, you know, I, I, I'm teaching my kid to sew you know, use my sewing machine, things that I have not taken time to do, yeah. you know, and, and gardening. Out, I see, I drive through town and I see parents out in the yard planting flowers and stuff with their kids. So, you know, it's yeah. a great time to, to reconnect and do some things that we haven't been doing with our families. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we've tried to do as well. I told my girls, we're not getting the scurvy because we're going to be growing some, yeah. uh, some vegetables out back. So yeah. pretty sure I got that, those signals mixed, but that's okay. <laughs> Well, hey, I really appreciate it, Kyle. I think we're, what we're trying to do with these series is getting ideas out there. And and we know it's 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 an unfair ask that, that educators have been hit with. Um, and so as schools are struggling, we're just trying to find ways. Of, can we spotlight folks that are doing some interesting things? And I knew you guys would be doing some good things out there. So. Well, I don't know that it's, we're doing anything that special. It's just we're fortunate because we've been doing this stuff for a while. Yeah. We've been doing it for several years. We had things in place. It makes things a little easier for us. But, you know, just a word of encouragement to anybody else out there in the school systems. You know, you can get through it. You know, be creative. Think outside the box. And, you know, we'll, we'll all get through it together. So. Cool. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Kyle. No problem. Thank you.